Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. In this video, I'm going to be talking about stratigraphic hydrocarbon traps. Stratigraphic traps occur due to variations in lithology. There are two main categories of stratigraphic traps. Traps that occur next to unconformities, either above or below, and traps that occur within normal conformable sequences. Let's take a closer look at both of these categories. Here we go. To start, we look at a basic cross-section of an anticlinal trap. You should be able to identify all features within this cross-section. Let's begin our look at stratigraphic hydrocarbon traps. These traps can be found adjacent to unconformities, above in the form of channels or onlap, or below where truncation occurs. Stratigraphic traps can also be contained within normal conformable sequences, which can be depositional in nature, in the form of channels, bars, and reefs, as well as diagenetic traps, where traps occur due to secondary porosity from fracturing and replacement. We will have a look at the development of a simple normal conformable sequence and unconformity related traps. In a sedimentary basin, sand, shales, and gravels are laid out over a period of time. In this case, distinctive sediment layers are laid out flat with varying thickness, creating a normal conformable sequence. If the layers tilt, and followed by a series of erosion events, a major unconformity is created. Sediments deposit once again, creating new layering above the unconformity. If a good cap rock exists above the unconformity, hydrocarbons can be trapped below the unconformity. Hydrocarbons can also be trapped within lows above the unconformity caused by channels, as well as wedges of sediment which are truncated against the unconformity. In a slightly different case, laying is eroded, followed by sediments onlapping on the unconformity, creating more stratigraphic traps, as long as conditions are favorable. Now compared to structural traps, stratigraphic traps are harder to locate as they are not as easily resolved by reflection seismology. Steeply dipping anticlines are far easier to identify than pinch out or unconformities which blend in with surrounding geometry. The conditions under which stratigraphic traps are formed are more complex than their structural cousins. Also, keep in mind there are far more combinations of stratigraphic traps than I'm able to cover in this video. Now we'll have a look at channels. One type of channels are braided channels that are made up of networks of small channels, sandbars, and temporary islands. These occur in high sloped areas with high sediment loads. When buried, the channels and bars are of interest as stratigraphic traps. Next up, meandering channels, which are formed with less energy than braided channels. These channels have a meandering course where sediments are eroded from the outside bend and deposited on the inside. Again, when buried, these channels and bars are of interest for stratigraphic traps. Finally, deltaic environments are important for channels and bars for stratigraphic traps. A deltaic environment occurs where rivers carry sediment to an ocean, sea, lake, generally a body of standing water. A deltaic environment changes shape with ocean levels or tides, erosion, and deposition. When buried, a deltaic environment is an important stratigraphic trap. Now in cross-sectional view, channels will cut through different layers within a normal conformable sequence. The channels will then fill in over time with sands and silts. Sediments will continue to deposit with channels cutting through and across different layers. Finally, with proper conditions, hydrocarbons will accumulate within these stratigraphic traps. Reefs also make good stratigraphic as well as structural traps. In a reef situation where reefs develop offshore, over time, sediments will drape over the reef with compaction occurring due to the overburden. Structural traps can form in the anticline draped over the reef and stratigraphic traps within the reef itself. Once again, I've been using 2D illustrations to talk about stratigraphic traps. As was the case with structural traps, 3D situations tend to be far more complex than their 2D cousins. In channel and deltaic environments, sandbars and barrier bars can become hydrocarbon traps. In a simple bar situation, a channel will deposit sands which will be buried by sediments over time. Under proper conditions, hydrocarbons will accumulate within the porous sandstone. In a deltaic setting, a barrier bar or bar situation will develop over time. 
In this case, barrier bars will form as the deltaic environment retrogrades. If the barrier bars are enclosed in shales, stratigraphic traps will form. The traps will form parallel to paleo shorelines. Finally, we'll have a quick look at diagenetic traps. Diagenetic traps form in brittle rocks that would not normally become reservoir rocks. In this case, folding occurs in an area with a limestone. Fracturing causes secondary porosity where leaching of the non-reservoir rock can allow hydrocarbons to accumulate. Diagenetic traps can also occur as a result of porosity through dissolution of a non-reservoir quality rock. To recap, there are two main categories of stratigraphic traps. Stratigraphic traps which occur next to unconformities, either below if a good cap rock has been deposited in the area, or above the unconformity if there is onlap, channels, or truncation. Stratigraphic traps also occur within normal conformable sequences as a result of channels or bars being deposited or eroded over time in ancient river systems, deltaic environments, or alluvial fans. Diagenetic traps also form as a result of secondary porosity from fracturing and dissolution. I've provided a link to my notes down below if you'd like to use them. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and even better, share my video around your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.